My question is for Alan. Um, at the risk of being a privileged middle-aged white guy, asking <laughs> a, another privileged middle-aged white guy to pontificate on social equity, I wanted to ask you about supercharged housing prices. For decades, the politics of fear has stalled a meaningful tax reform. Legislative and regulatory responses to the problem have been simplistic and sometimes exacerbated the problem. Does the impact of COVID-19 provide an opportunity for our politicians to rewrite the playbook? And if so, what initiatives should be at the top of their list? Yeah, Alan, what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, yeah, my kids are in the same position, can't uh, trying to get a house, uh, finding it's really difficult. Um, prices are so high. Um, but the thing is, the problem is that we call it an affordability crisis yes. or an unaffordability crisis. And part of the problem is that houses have never been more affordable because of interest rates where they are. You know, the oh. mortgage rates are 2%. So um, everyone can afford a house uh, now because that, of the repayments. That's a pretty generous to explanation <laughs> for the <laughs> situation. The I mean. reason prices are going up is because everyone's bidding them up because they can afford to pay the repayments. That doesn't help with the deposit. I but, get if, that. but if you're a young person and you're bidding on a one or two bedroom flat, the reality is you're bidding against superannuants who are buying an investment yes. property. Mm. Mm. Well, um, uh, yeah. Well, the the uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 statistics have shown that first home buyers have been the big drivers of the latest boom in house prices over the past twelve months. First home buyers have really coming to the market and they are bidding. It's just in the past month... Come on, you're not going to blame first home buyers for the No, I'm not, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that first home buyers have been a huge, a big entrance into the market in the last 12 months. Investors less so. Last time in the boom of 2015-16, uh, it was all about investors. This time it's been more about first home buyers and other you know, owner-occupiers upgrading. Less so investors, although that's now changing a bit. Um, the problem, fundamental problem, which is to do with COVID, is, is that the cash rate is 0.1%. That's the problem. Um, uh, you know, that, that, uh, the, the Reserve Bank manipulating interest rates in order to achieve a, um, an economic outcome uh, is distorting asset prices of all sorts, particularly property, but also shares. Um, so all asset prices are being distorted. Uh, house prices are being driven up. Um, uh, the affordability, if you measure it in terms of repayment, is quite low. I mean, in the sense that it, houses are affordable. The problem is getting a deposit together. And then you get down to questions of intergenerational equity and are the parents sitting on a whole lot of money in a house uh, that's too big for them and should they then start to share that money either through a reverse mortgage with the children uh, so that they can... Uh, I mean, that's OK if you've got parents who own their house, of course, if your parents don't own their house. But I think that there is an issue about uh, uh, helping kids get deposits. I mean, because parents are living too much too, too long now. Some would say... <laughs> no, but, uh, but by the time the parents die, yeah. the kids have retired. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some arguing, actually, you should give them their super to help them buy a house. Well, yeah, well, super won't do it, really. I mean, the, uh, the kids have got... Kids haven't got any money in super yet. I mean, it takes ages to build up enough in super to make a difference to get a sort of house deposit. So that's really not going to that's not going to cut it. I mean, uh, the, well, that, what about that... everyone that everyone has to rent though? They'll never ever be able to buy a home. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and the hex repayment threshold in the year 2017 to 18 used to be 55 grand, yeah. and now be, it's 45. I seem to be coming across as um, some kind of defender of this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, but the thing is, <laughs> uh, one of the problems with being a tenant is that the laws in Australia uh, favour landlords, and um, they're true. only just starting to change. In Europe, it's okay to be a tenant. People are tenants all their lives. It's fine because you get protected. In America, there's rent control. We have none of that in Australia. Tenants are really screwed here. And that's why everyone tries to buy a house. But if tenants were looked after better um, just... with the laws and if there was some sort of rent control, then it wouldn't be such a big Long deal. Long leases. I mean, it, it, look, it, it is terrible if you end up retiring. I'm going to give one very bright, brief final thought to Fiona Martin, who I can see is trying to get in on the conversation. If you could keep it brief, because we're out of time. <laughs>
Look, we definitely have the highest level of first home owners since um, 2009. So we, we, we are doing well with first home owners and that's because we've put in place some effective programs. Um, the first home owners deposit scheme, for example, we're doing incredibly well there. We had um, up to, I think, 26,000 recipients of that program that we implemented. And also we put in place um, Home Builder, which uh, we had 121,000 um, applications for. So these programs have proven effective and they're programs that we've implemented. Have they, Alan Cole? Have, have, have they proved effective the or is it just the interest rates? Of first home owner buyers. Well, those first home owner grants have just gone on the price. People, the first home buyers have just, um, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Okay. They just use the money and bid the price up, and it's you know it's it, the problem is that everything that you do for it just drives prices up higher, including interest rates lower.